Hello, my name is Josh Beck. I'm a technology teacher in San Antonio, Texas. This is uh, my second lesson in um, my series on building games with the Blender. I've been teaching this unit to a seventh grade class. Um, right now, I've got a lot of kids who are working with the, uh, the game engine. And, uh, well, a lot of them have gotten pretty good at it. So if you're interested in working with the game engine, you might want to check it out. I've learned a lot of things just through the mistakes that we've all made. And uh, it's, it's been a pretty interesting unit. So if you're interested in building uh, games in the Blender, you might want to check out some of the games tutorials I'm putting together because a lot of it just involves uh, troubleshooting that I've done throughout the week. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete the cube. And I'm going to go to Add Mesh Plane. I'm going to resize the plane and um, let's see, I'll go ahead and I'll constrain it to the x-axis and make it a little skinnier. Let's go ahead and make it y there. Okay, um, and then we get a nice rectangle. Alright, let's take that rectangle, let's extrude the region downward, make a small um, a rectangular um, cube out of it. Now I'm going to go into object mode. All right, and in object mode, I'm going to pick the logic buttons, which is the little purple face. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a launch pad out of this, and it's going to bat a sphere a lot like a baseball. Um, over here, we've got our sensors, our controllers, and our actuators. So I'm going to add a sensor. I'm going to add a controller and I'm going to add an actuator. And the defaults just happen to be what we want. We always want this particular um, particular uh, motion to take place, all right? And, right, we want motion. All right, so in the motion category, I've got three fields. Each one represents a different axis. So let's go ahead and just change the first one to point one. Now if I zoom out and I hit P, you can see that the plane rotates. You can also use negative numbers. I'm going to change that 1 to a negative 1. And if I hit P, you can see it now rotates the other way. Um, same thing applies here. If I pick a different axis, you can see now it is rotating in a different direction. I'll go ahead and put it on shaded mode so it just looks just a little bit better. All right. So let's go ahead and get it so it's rotating front to back by going into our first field. And I'm going to go ahead and change the value to 0.1. The next step is to add a sphere above the plane. And I'm going to choose Add Mesh. And I'm going to choose UV Sphere. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to size that down. Okay, now that I've got a UV sphere, I need it to be able to interact with the plane, so I'm going to go back to my logic button. All right, and this time I'm going to click on the actor button. It says actor. I'm going to choose dynamic, and I'm going to choose rigid body. That's all there is to it. Um, so if I hit P, watch what happens. All right, it bats the sphere pretty much out of the park. There it goes. And we've got a nice consistent rotation there, and that sphere is batted upward. Okay, so here's some of the problems that people run into when they're doing this. Uh, the sphere itself, a lot of times if you move an object in edit mode, you might mess the object center up. So this white circle here, that's the object center. All right, And you need to make sure your object centers are, are taken care of. So if you go into the editing panel and you choose center new, all right, the center will be snapped back to the object, uh, to the center of the object where it was originally. Um, same thing here. Let's take a look at this, and I'll go ahead and I'll move the center up to where the cursor is by clicking center cursor. Now we've got our white center for this plane in a different location. And you'll see that if I play the animation now, the plane is rotating around that center. And you might get some strange results if uh, your center's in the wrong place. So just by clicking center new, the white goal moves right back to where it, where it should be. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a student project from this week. This one's pretty neat. This was done by uh, one of the students in my class. And what we have is we have the maze from last time. 
and we have a plane and a sphere just like we set up a second ago. Now let's just go ahead and watch what happens first. If I hit P, all right, it's a little choppy because of the screen cast software. We've got the sphere drops into the maze. Now without the screen cast software running, that would run very smoothly. Um, let's look at it through the camera once. Watch what happens. We've got the camera set up to follow the sphere so that as it moves, and it's a little choppy through the screencast software, but you can get the picture. All right, it bounces right down into the maze after being flung through a series of rings. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we've got our plane. And here's a neat trick. If you hit delete on the number pad right next to the zero, it zeroes in on the object. All right, so we've got our plane, we've got our sphere set up as before. We've got our maze from lesson one all right, and we've got our camera. Now the camera is set up to always have, and instead of motion here, I chose camera, and I put the values in minimum distance, maximum distance, and height. And that acts almost like a parent, but this camera, which is over here, when you start the game, immediately swings over to the sphere and follows it, all right, up through those rings. So. Uh, that is lesson two for the game engine. We need to create a plane, a sphere, and we need to get it launched into the maze, just like so. We'll play it one more time. There it goes. So that's a, that's a real nice job. Great student project. Um, pay attention. We'll be uh, pay attention. Look for more lessons. We'll be uh, putting more out as time goes on. And thank you for watching.